Today, I would like to talk about the medical application of a material called hydrogel as part of the medical technology we are promoting. First of all, have you ever heard of gel? Gel contains water and feels soft and pliable to the touch. In fact, there are many gels around us. For example, jellies and rice as foods are also a type of gel. Contact lenses and other items used outside the body are also made of gel. Actually, human skin and organs also have a gel structure. There have been many requests in the past to use gel inside the body. But the actual use of gel has been limited to contact lenses outside the body and has not been realized for use in regenerative medicine. So why did this happen? It is because the gel is not homogeneous. If you zoom in on the jelly as shown here, you can see inhomogeneous networks. The reason this inhomogeneity is problematic is that the physical laws of gel have not yet been elucidated. Therefore, in its inhomogeneous state, it is impossible to predict or control its behavior in the body using mathematical formulas. However, if the gel has a homogeneous network, it is possible to predict and control its behavior in the body by putting it into a mathematical equation. However, gels with such homogeneous networks have never existed in this world. In the past, attempts have been made to use them in a heterogeneous state for medical purposes. A prime example is Mira gel, which was used about 30 years ago. This is a buckle used to treat retinal detachment that is wrapped around the eye. At the time, it was confirmed safe and had obtained regulatory approval, but after more than 10 years, the buckle developed a problem, it swelled up around the eye. This buckle itself was made of gel. What was supposed to heal the eye, instead caused it to rupture and cause blindness. The gel we have developed is tetragel. It is the only homogeneous gel that exists in the world and has been called the gel that changed the history of hydrogels. We have been working on this research for more than 10 years and have published more than 100 papers in journals such as nature-related journals and science. We have also written textbooks on gels in both Japanese and English and are recognized worldwide as a leading authority on gels. In this context, we have elucidated a series of physical laws of gels and now we have complete control over gels. So what can we do when we have complete control over the gel? Here, a hole is punctured in an area of the rat called the abdominal vena cava. The hole causes massive bleeding. And according to experts in vascular surgery, rats with such a hole here have had a 100% chance of death so far. Look at the amount of this bleeding. Previously, there was no hemostatic agent that could stop this immediately. This is where our gel-based hemostatic agent comes in. When this is applied, the bleeding is stopped instantly. This is a remarkable effect. So, in terms of what can be controlled, we are in a position to control just about anything related to gels. However, I think it is difficult to understand just by showing this. So I think it would be better to show individual cases with videos. For example, we can control the solidification time of a gel at will, from the moment we mix two liquids, if we require an operating time, say 5 minutes, we can solidify it in 5 minutes. In addition, gelation at very low concentrations is also possible. This is a concentration of about 0.4%, and in this case, gelation usually does not occur or is slow, but with our gel, Gelation can occur instantly as soon as it passes through the syringe needle. This kind of control is also possible. In addition, the degradation time is also adjustable. By creating gels with different degradability, it is possible to have the gel degrade at a targeted time. We can also freely control the stiffness factor and adapt it to the soft tissues in the body. It is important to adjust the appropriate hardness because too soft and the gel will fracture, and too hard and the surrounding tissues may be compromised. However, our gels can accommodate this, so there is no need to worry about the gel peeling off or breaking as the tissue moves. It can also stretch and contract, and while tissues are essentially moving, our gel can accommodate that movement, and organs can move without any problems. 
Additionally, hydrogels can be responsive to bodily fluids and solidify instantly. For example, it can instantly become a gel with blood when it comes in contact with blood, or it can be prepared with other triggers and solidified by them. Furthermore, gels are essentially swellable. For example, if you put it in water, it will swell two to three times. But we can completely control that and make it so that it does not swell. Therefore, it is very safe for use in the body. Other factors, such as adhesion, can also be completely controlled. The example on the right is an adhesive gel, which can be used to make the adhesion so firm that the skin is lifted. On the other hand, with the non-adhesive gel on the left, when peeled off with tweezers, the skin is not lifted, only the gel is peeled off. In other words, the adhesiveness can be freely adjusted and used in different ways. In addition, porous structures can be created. Normally, the network of gels is only a few nm wide, so even if a solution with a particle size of several tens of micrometers, such as a colloidal solution, is soaked into the gel, it generally does not penetrate the gel and thus does not turn it black. We can, however, increase the size of the holes by using a special method. In this way, the gel is dyed black when soaked in black ink, for example, while maintaining a structure similar to that of a sponge. Also, by pressing it, the ink can be expelled out. The story of how this is superior is that when injected into the body, it can be used as a scaffold for regenerative medicine. With ordinary gels, the size of the network is only a few micrometers, so basically no cells can penetrate into the gel. However, with networks of a few dozen micrometers, cells can penetrate inside and regenerate tissue. It is also possible to form a uniform film using a spray, and in this way, every possible factor can be controlled at will. By using these different properties of hydrogels, we are developing a variety of medical products. For example, hemostatic agents and scaffolds for tissue reconstruction. We can also make devices to treat varicose veins and adhesives. Our company is unique in that we develop each product by properly utilizing the performance of the gel. We already have many achievements. Focusing on companies in the Kansai region, for example, we are working with Medicos Hirata on the development of hemostatic agents and are collaborating with them toward regulatory approval in 2025. We also recently announced a partnership with Kaigen Pharma, and we believe that we have good chemistry with companies in the Kansai region. The reason for our participation this time is that we are looking for a joint development partner. There are two major patterns we can consider. One is to develop existing pipelines together. For example, we have already confirmed POC at the animal level for tendon regeneration materials, ophthalmic surgical aids, and nerve regeneration materials, all of which have advanced to the preclinical stage. The second is to combine our gel technology with your technology and needs to create a completely new idea and pipeline. We would like to work with you to eventually be able to sell our product as your company's product. If you are interested, we would be very happy to hear from you later. That is all. Thank you very much.